these uh, uh, 12 tubes of paint for 16 bucks. Wow. And uh, I'm going to mix up my puddle bigger than I think. Of uh, my midtone. And now I'm going to paint my midtone, and that's going to include my dark shapes. To figure out how can I, I how can I make this painting, and I'm going to use uh, Mr. Gravity because uh, I want to keep the bead. So I'm going to uh, start with. Uh, I'm just going to paint. I see. I've got a. I'm painting it on dry. Yeah, there's no reason to do anything else. I see I have a few little uh, sparklies uh, coming down here on this uh, head that I'm going to try to leave. And uh, the rest of it is all going to be in uh, midtone. And I'm not going to barely be able to recognize what this is. I'm going to try to leave my uh, white. And if I goof it up, I can go back with gouache. Too bad there's not a gouache for life. Yeah. Why? Too bad there's not a gouache for life. You know, you screw something up, you go, oh, let's squash that over. Look at some of Charles Reed's uh, uh, portraits. He does tiling very well. Yes. Yeah, anybody uh, who, uh, uh, here, here's the key for me for the tiling. Uh, anybody who paints, uh, lets the watercolor paint itself is a believer in tiling. Because they let, the, they let it mix or mingle, as you say. Mingling is just the, the newest word to explain tiling. I mean, that's what all the um, instructors I, and books say. Yeah. Our, our, generation, yeah. our generation, they taught us tiling, balance, <laughs> mingling. Yeah. So this is a tremendous uh, help for me. And I think I'm done. So that, uh, that by itself, Uh, I think they're interesting uh, shapes, and I can kind of see what's going on with that, and it's not, it doesn't have to be totally uh, accurate, but it has to incorporate the big shapes. Anyway, there's my big shape person. So 
that gives me my my roadmap for being able to go over here and uh, paint my color. And I don't have a uh, color. Uh, I don't have any color reference on this. So you're just going to have to make up your own background flesh tones. I'm probably going to keep this pretty uh, mono. Uh, analogous i'm going to probably use like a zorn palette you know cool. it's going to be pretty warm i think this is the the figuring out of this is the probably the most difficult part of this whole deal how to figure that out. Oops. See if I can match this. Forgot, forgot a couple of little things here. It's not important though. I've got my big overall shape. So that means I can go back with my first step. I can make this wet and wet, right? And I can make it light my, on my value scale. I'm only using those first three. The big thing that I wanted to see that everybody uh, did not try to paint a face yet, because that face mostly is in the midtone. Only I only have the light where you'd think the nose, the lip, the chin. And it doesn't have to be that exact. I didn't do a very good job of figuring my light, but I could go back with white paint and make it exact. But I have a question. Yes. When you're doing multitudes in the background, you've got different colors. How do you? do this formula? It, well, first of all, squint your eyes so you can see the shapes and not the detail, but it's also going to help you to get rid of some of the color. When you squint your eyes, the color goes away. I'm seeing you much more in black and white. The more I squint my eyes, I'm seeing much more muted color. So I'm not concerned with that. And every color is a value. Mm -hmm. Is it light, dark? Is it midtone? Right. That, that's really all. I, I get do. caught up in the background. That's the problem. Your backgrounds might be too. Uh, first of all, there there would be out of focus, soft edge, in my view. Mm -hmm. I'm general. I'm speaking generally. Yeah. Uh, or generally <laughs> speaking, and also uh, they're more muted in color. They're not as bright. Because that's not where I want you to look. Right. So I want you to look uh, at, at differences and contrast is king. Whether it's a bright color against a subtle color, whether it's a soft edge against a hard edge, whether it's a dark value against the light value, those are all three things that uh, where I want you to look. I'm going to direct your brain to look at those three areas. Yeah. Right? Did I do this beginning correctly? Yeah, it's great. That's great. Yeah, don't don't let the paint let the paint paint itself. Don't let don't 
box. Try to stay within the, uh, the box. Just get the essence of that. Squint your eyes till everything gets fuzzy and paint that. Okay. Because it's going to all, uh, it's all, all going to start defining itself when you paint wet on dry with your midtones. And then it's really going to define itself when you paint uh, uh, your darks. Okay. So. Yeah, I'm trying to really slow down and really yeah. pay attention. So does everybody right. kind of see where this uh, is going? So I'm going um, to paint my... You, yes? I, have to excuse, I have to excuse myself for a few minutes. I got some people here doing some work on the house. Okay. Oh, okay. You just finished that uh, painting uh, in your uh, with your black or your neutral tint or your paint gray or whatever you used. I suggest you get some clean water because uh, I'm just going to start floating some color on here, and I'm going to keep it real warm. And maybe uh, maybe I do a pink rose. Maybe I could do a yellow rose. I don't know. Anyway, I've got my roadmap. I can see where the light and the shade is on this. Oops, Carol, I'm going to say goodbye. I'm going to have to save the rest of this. Carol, are you still there? Where does she go? I want to make sure I'm still recording. Yep, I'm still recording. So anyway, this is a great way to start out this painting. And you could, if you've got enough miles on you, you could actually just go ahead and start. Because, because you can see the shapes, you're not confused by color, you can actually, uh, that's the big deal in all of this is recognizing the shapes, right? Mm -hmm. And that's going to make that looks mess. It looks like nothing right now, but that's going to turn into something pretty evident uh, when the, I put the darks in. Yeah, but you I'm know, not, uh, when we were doing uh, shadows, uh, you had some, some cloth or uh, yeah, very great. Right? Right. Uh, you no, know, it's a struggle. You look at this this way, and it's just another shape. It's yeah, it's just, just another shape. That's all it is. Yeah. You know, so if I'm doing drapery, I've got a light light. And then I've got the midtone, and, yeah. and then I've got the shadow. Yeah. And it just makes the whole shape simple. Simplifies everything. Okay, following our process, I'm just going to float some color on here, and it can be whatever I want. I'm going to use uh, wet and wet, so I'm going to use Mr. Gravity, and uh, I'm going to use my leaf palette by Cracky.
I'm going to try to keep that rose uh, lighter, but here's what I'm going to do with that. Uh, I'm, I'm going to uh, wet this. I'm going to wet this too. And I'm going to start adding some uh, Lello. I'm going to make that a uh, yellow rose. I'm going to put some warmth down here. I'm going to go back to that uh, burnt sienna ish kind of color. Let that uh, mingle. I want this to connect back here. I'm kind of following my roadmap here, except I'm just doing it wet. I haven't used this yet, so I'm going to use some of this, let it mingle. Little pink. And maybe uh, I'm, I'm going to keep this whole. I'm just going to use uh, burnt sienna, burnt umber, burnt uh, raw sienna. I'm going to let some of this uh, mingle. I'm gonna to try to capture a little bit of the light with this, but I'm being pretty soft with it. This is my first uh, wash. That's probably enough for my first uh, play with this. I think I want to leave this uh, shoulder uh, pretty light right here. We've got people throwing things. Anyway, I think that's enough for my first uh, wash. Yeah, that's Diane. You know, she's crazy. Yeah, I know. <laughs> So anyway, that's what I would do to start off with. And of course, that's going to change later, but you know how that goes. So now I can dry this. Hi, Joe. I was able to get in, but not until now. Okay. Well, draw Evelyn. And I uh, just, I did my uh, black and white, or I did my value study, my two, two of my three values, the mid-tone and the light. 
I'm not doing the black yet because right now I'm just painting the light part of my painting. Even though that spot looks dark right there, I don't care. It's the light values of my painting. Are you getting anything out of this? Paint it soft. Paint it. Don't try to paint any detail yet. Just paint it soft. Let the let it mingle. Let it connect. Let it uh, whatever. Make make it make it pretty wet. I uh, I'm this started to dry out on me here, but I can fix that later. And yes, you could say that's a little bit too dark, but I don't care because it's going to be dark anyway. Anyway, I just wanted to establish a palette in here. So uh, all it's all warm. I haven't used any orange yet. Uh, I'm just painting my light part of my uh, image. Oh, sure. Yeah, sometimes I make, I still um, I wish I would have made this a little bit wetter. It's still pretty wet, but some of these uh, harder edges are for me to remember to, oh yeah, that's a hard edge. I want the contrast there. You know, I think if you do, uh, if you do this stuff this way, that it's going to make your life a lot easier on uh, as you're painting about where do I really want you to look because it's all about edges and values. Uh, and I think you can control it a lot better here than later on. So now I'm into uh, painting. Uh, I painted this light part, and uh, now I'm into painting uh, some of my mid-tone shapes. And so uh, I'm not gonna put in my darks yet. Uh, in fact, I'm gonna start off with a lighter mid-tone and a little more colorful one. And I'm gonna say that uh, hair is uh, kind of a uh, golden. And there's a little sneaky part back there and uh, it's going to go down into the face, but not. Not as much as you might think for me, uh, I'm going to put in a couple more. Little guys here just to warm that up and to connect some of this uh, color. Connect some of this color down here. And now I can start getting darker with this. In fact, what I think I'm going to do is, uh, and I'm not using any dark yet. I'm not using any black. I'm just using uh, some uh, burnt umber. And uh, now I can drop that in. I see a big uh, shape here. I see a shape coming down here, I think. And uh, around that kind of lost my ear. There's an ear. And I'm going to connect this. Uh, I'm going to connect that hair to the background here. I think that would be a good thing to do. So now I'm trying to figure out uh, how did I 
trying to look through to my drawing again. Yeah, totally lost in there. Yeah, kind of, uh, kind of went away a little bit. My shoulder. And now I'm starting to uh, get into the folds of this uh, cloth. I'm still using uh, just burnt sienna to block this stuff in with. This is where I have to be kind of careful. But I can always uh, fix this with uh, gouache. Still painting mid-tone, pretty simple mid-tone.
the chart blocking in, uh, trying to figure out where my uh, darks and lights are coming from. Looking at this. I really haven't changed uh, from uh, my uh, burnt sienna. Sneaking up on it. Now I'm going to add, I'm going to add just a little bit of, um, I'm going to use burnt sienna, but I'm going to add a little blue to it. Just to darken it up and dirty it up, neutralize it a little bit. And I want that hair to go right into the background.
I'm going to kill a couple of these little places where I don't want you to look. I'm just putting a little tone, a little slight tone over the top of that. It's got some hot on the top of here and a little bit of cool as it goes on down this wrap right here underneath this. Doesn't have to be exact, exact. I know this is challenging, but I need a mall stick for this. <laughs> I keep uh, dipping my hand in this paint. I'm gonna cool this and simplify this back here. Emphasize the light up here a little bit more. And now I am definitely using my color as a value. I know some of this looks uh, dark right now, but it's not yet. Anyway, uh, I'm done uh, up until uh, this point. So there's kind of my taking that. And as I say, this is kind of a high contrast shot. So I've got a lot of uh, dark mid-tone, which I've displayed here. And I'm not uh, done putting in my darks yet. Watercolor is so fun because you can lift so easily. So I'll give you uh, time to get this far. And uh, all, the, all the big shapes should be uh, blocked in by now. I want to lift just a little tad here to remind me to do that. Yes.
So now I have painted everything that's gray on here. And don't be fooled beautiful. This, that this is just a 50% gray. That's all I want because I'm doing three values, zero, 50, and 100. Uh, that does not include this whole range of uh, midtones going from here all the way over to here. So I've got that whole range. I'm just splitting it, my little, uh, my little value study, my noton into this, this, and this. And so that's how you figure out the light and all the other stuff. And you've got gouache to figure it out from there. And now the next step is I'm gonna go back and add my darks on this guy. And then that's gonna give me a clue on this guy. And if you guys are having difficulty with uh, this is, as I said last week or the week before, uh, when you uh, do these things, it's going to uh, help you because it's going to quote out that you need more, uh, you need to draw more or you need to design more if that's your issue. And uh, Luma's book is uh, what I grew up on, and I guess Peggy too. Uh, that's an excellent set, uh, set of stuff. In fact, I will think, uh, I think I'm gonna try to uh, find those PDF files on Luma's. You can also find some of the, some of his stuff sometimes on that website called Alibris, A-L-I-B-R-I-S, because they have a lot of used books. By the way, uh, for anybody who finds something, please share it. Okay. Uh, uh, post it on a cluster, post it uh, on an email, post it on whatever. Oh, this is, by the way, uh, I have an announcement to make. Uh, and I think I told uh, some people this, but let me go back to, let me go back to here and, uh, I want to go to uh, Studio Channel Islands for a second. You guys might want to come to this, especially you, Shirley, because you have a background in it, mm -hmm. if you can make it. Uh, they're doing a demo uh, with uh, Henry uh, or Victor Wang on the 18th. And this is what he looks like. Oh, wow. And this is, this is uh, huge. This is all uh, charcoal and wash. Wow. So, so it's a charcoal and wash demo. It's three to six on uh, June 18th. And I think that's a Saturday. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, the guy's got some paintings hanging in the gallery right now, but I thought, I thought this was pretty interesting. Yeah. I'm Just charcoal go, and water? Uh, uh, whatever, how he does it. Uh -huh. uh, it's charcoal and a brush. Or charcoal and an eraser, charcoal and uh, benzene, or you know whatever uh, dissolves yeah. charcoal. I'm not sure, but anyway, I think it's worth a, a look. So I will send you guys an email uh, uh, later on. To uh... do you need tickets for that? You have to register, I think because they got okay. need a head count. I think they can get quite a few people, a couple hundred people in there, but 
I seriously doubt there's going to be a couple hundred people in there. <laughs> so I'll be right. Uh, I'll give you five minutes, and then I'm going to put the dark in here, and then I'm going to um, put the dark on the other side. So we're almost done. We almost have everything in there. Are you having a good time with this? Mm -hmm. Love it. Okay. Cool. There's no yes. difference in painting anything True. else. I don't care if you chose to paint a bird of paradise this way. Yeah. Well, you know, you guys can paint a bird of paradise this way. Yes. Or a diesel train. Right. Or a totem pole. <laughs> <laughs> or an elephant. Uh. Or use eucalyptus trees. Hmm. Huh. Oh. Oh. Come on. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can't put some darks in here to make the one on the left look like something. So I'm just gonna use my uh, black paint again. And uh, I'm going to go for my reference, and I see there's some uh, dark in here, and there's some dark there. I see this big swooshy dark. I see the ear is defined by dark. Kind of, sort of, a little bit of dark there. I'm sculpting her head in, or trying to. And what I decided before is that I want uh, I want her head to connect to the background. I want this to be dark. The curls coming down. Her shoulder being defined. So I'm going to make this all dark. Can let up a little bit there, start defining this uh, cloth back here. That can be dark. I think I'm going to uh, put some more dark over here just to highlight that head. I know there's going to be dark down here. I'm gonna to try to be kind of careful. Dark around this flower because that's kind of the, her gaze and this is kind of the star. Dark under this uh, chin to define it. A little dark for this uh, forehead. No, I should be, I should have my glasses on. <laughs> What's wrong with me? I'm going to do the same thing I did on the other one. I'm going to have me tans and uh, 
So there's an eyebrow and this is uh, pretty much the, the eye where she's uh, gazing down a little bit for the nose. Uh, lips are kind of sort of like that. And that a uh, little bit of dark to define that uh, face, that profile. A little bit of dark on this uh, cloth. You don't have to go crazy with this. That's probably all I need to define this. Oops, a couple little places here. Anyway, that's probably all I need. So I'm just going to mix up that uh, black and I'm gonna put some, um, I'm gonna put some blue with it because I want to, uh, I don't want it to just be black, but I want it to cool off a little bit. So I'm gonna put a little bit through here and down into here, I'm gonna define that ear a little bit. And I'm gonna let that, dark now that I've established it. Go right on into this uh, background. Uh, you notice I did make the light coming from here uh, I made this lighter middle tone and darker over on this side. And add a few little of that, whatever that color I was using, I'm gonna add a little bit of it 
in here just so I'm consistent, I'm connecting. So there's a little cooler, a little cooler. Yep, I'm going to do a little cooler in there carefully. Try to do it carefully. Now I'm gonna use the opposite. I'm gonna use a warm, uh, dark. See if I can't uh, establish that eyebrow. Need a little thicker paint to control it a little bit more. Uh, there's my... Uh, eye looking down.
Uh, anyway, now I've put uh, my darks in. I think I've got enough uh, darks in there. Maybe uh, just a couple little uh, where that shadow and fringes on the rest of it. And maybe just a couple of little, uh, I'm going to use some, uh, I'm going to add, add that uh, blue to that. I'm going to make it a little blue. I don't know why, I just want to. Just for a little color change. You know, I think I'll put a, uh, a dangly, uh, not a dangly, but a, a little uh, earring on her. Just be here.
Anywho, you can uh, if you guys are really struggling with this and you hate me for it, then uh, blame it on Diane. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's uh, just another way to uh, paint. And I don't know if you noticed how I painted this. Uh, what is it, mid-tone, or was it tiling, or was it uh, gra grisse? It's beautiful. It was not grisse. It was uh, a matter of tiling. See all these little shapes I put together? See that shape? See that shape? There's a shape. That's a shape. These are all shapes. And... Uh, I'm kind of a tile guy, but it all works. If you, uh, if you start off, this is giving me my information, my information to go ahead and finish this. And this helped me quite a bit to be able to finish that. And that doesn't have to be that great, but uh, you can see where we're going with this. And I think I have a little lifting to do right here to uh, connect. The neck. Yeah. Okay, done putzing.